Thanks, Aaron. Here is the latest now at this hour. Explosions lit up the night sky in Iraq Thursday as a day got underway over Baghdad and other cities across the country. U.S. military officials say they expected to unleash about 1,500 satellite-guided bombs and missiles during the war's first 24 hours. Iraq says two major buildings in Baghdad called the Peace Palace and the Flower Palace were turned into ruins. Baghdad is by no means the only Iraqi city in the crosshairs of coalition warplanes. Heavy bombing also rattled the northern cities of Mosul and Kirkuk, where at least 20 explosions were reported. The southeastern city of Basra was also hit. The Pentagon says Iraq's 51st Division was encamped nearby and has now so surrendered. So, is he or isn't he? It's been two days now since coalition forces struck a compound where Iraqi President Saddam Hussein was believed to be located. It is still unclear whether he's in control of his government or even alive. Today, Iraqi state TV broadcast new video of Hussein and his son, Kusay, but it is not known when that video was made. Support for Saddam Hussein spilled onto the streets of Syria, where hundreds of angry protesters condemned the U.S.-led war. In Egypt, demonstrations turned ugly as protesters set a fire truck ablaze and clashed with riot police there. Here in the U.S., thousands marched through downtown Chicago for a second straight day, chanting, peace is patriotic. And that is the news at this hour. We send it back over now to Aaron Brown. How do you think? That's right, Aaron. Well, we are literally standing on the road that leads to Baghdad. The border is about, oh, maybe 10, 15 kilometers from here. A lot of Turkish troops in this area for several weeks now, and a lot of them probably hoping to take this road to go into northern Iraq. Now, CNN, uh, CNN sister network, CNN Turk's military correspondent, says that about 1,000 troops have already crossed into northern Iraq. Our Jane Araf also uh, saw that from uh, the other side. Turkish uh, Minister of Defense saying that their mission there is to uh, provide a buffer zone to prevent uh, refugees from flowing into Turkey. And also the Turkish uh, Foreign Minister said that their mission is to prevent uh, terrorist attacks on Turkey. Now there has been a lot of concern expressed by the United States that if Turkish troops do go into northern Iraq in large numbers that could provide for uh, possible clashes between Turkish troops and the Kurdish uh, groups that operate in northern Iraq. The United States uh, had said earlier that an, ag an agreement had been reached between the different Kurdish organizations, the Turkish military and the United States. They all said they would work together to uh, prevent that type clashes, but still a lot of concern that if more Turkish troops go in there in large numbers, there could be problems over there in northern Iraq. Aaron? Is there the kind of buildup of Turkish troops behind you that, it, it, it just, that suggests they might be planning to do such a thing? That certainly seems to be the case, Aaron. I mean, the, the buildup has been going on for several weeks, and, uh, you know, everybody does seem to feel that that's what's going to happen. Turkey has felt, and this is a matter of public opinion here, that many feel almost uh, insulted by the, this agreement that has been reached by the United States. You know, the, uh, we're hearing just comments from people on the road down here where, you know, they said, well, you know, we opened up our airspace to the, to the Americans. They should let us go mm -hmm. in there uh, and do what we have to do. So obviously there is a lot of concern about that, just, you know, talking to people on the streets. Harris, thank you. Harris Whitbeck, who's in the southern part of Turkey, Samia Noku, and I hope I'm pronouncing that right, is a Reuters correspondent who is still being allowed to report from Baghdad um, on the phone with us now. What is it like there? Well, it's dawn now already. We had a very heavy uh, night of bombardment. It was actually the heaviest. We felt that war has really started in Baghdad. They uh, pounded basically warplane and cruise missile landed on uh, scores of targets in Baghdad. Uh, we could see fires raging from different sides, and uh, some buildings were still smoldering from the effect of the bombardment. Wailing sirens uh, were on continuously and off a few times, but it was uh, long and, uh, you know, very, very persistent. Uh, it, it obviously targeted uh, certain positions. We couldn't, uh, you know, we, we could tell from a distance from our hotel that they were targeting the presidential compound, which they targeted yesterday, which is the one that has the headquarters of the son of the president, Kusai. 
they did come back to it again, and this, at dawn they did uh, uh, fire missile strikes on it. Uh, we could see that one building was gutted and another was an empty space. We, we couldn't tell what it was, but some people could assume it's just maybe, you know, one of these bunkers there. Uh, they did uh, also strike at uh, another building which is ne next to a communication tower, and we could see that, uh, you know, clouds of white smoke mushrooming out of that building, and it, it was hit uh, two or three times, this building next to uh, a communication tower. Uh, ambulance was, were racing in the street, we could hear them, and then there were some fire trucks uh, heading towards the uh, fires to put them out, and they did manage to put uh, quite a few out. We don't see fires, but we could see some, some gutted buildings around. Uh, it, it's uh, obviously we're able uh, to see the city or at least a, a snapshot of the city the, uh, the sun has risen it, it's a, a bright sky is there uh, uh, both for you personally I suppose for the citizens too a sense that daylight is the safe time no not really this is the first day where we feel that it's not safe because uh, normally the first two days uh, they, they started for a limited amount of time and then we had all clear, but today it continued until the early uh, days of the morning, and we don't know if we can go out and go to our offices. It's kind of, uh, you know, you started to feel insecure. It's unpredictable. Uh, we know that there are targets, uh, precise targets. It's not, we haven't heard of civilian buildings being founded, but uh, it's still, you know, being caught on the street in the middle of bombardment. It's, it's, it's frightening. But it, it, we can judge in another hour, you know, not, not many people yeah. are on the street. Now, few cars ventured yes. out, and some people who were praying went to their mosque at dawn. That's all we could tell. Uh, Samia, thank you. Stay safe, Samia. Cool. You uh, of uh, the Reuters uh, news agency. Reuters were coming up at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Many of you joining us, particularly out west, uh, as your evening gets started. We'll take a look at uh, where the day has been so far. The major headlines of the day uh, here. CNN's Heidi Collins.